For over 30 years now, the hair loss community has been chasing shadows. Every few years, we are promised the philosopher's stone of follicular regeneration. A final cure that is always amusingly just five years away. Surprise! Having myself been in the trenches of hair restoration and hair loss treatment for men and women for over 20 years now, I have watched this charade repeat itself every few years with clockwork precision. A new molecule appears on the horizon. Social media and startups light up with excitement. A few slick animations are released on social media and then endless silence. And soon the hype fizzles out. No phase three trials, no commercial viability. Just another name added to the graveyard of failed miracles for hair loss cure. And in all these years, over two decades, only two treatments have stubbornly stood the test of time. DHT blockers and vasodilators like minoxidil. Everything else has been quite simply all sizzle and no steak. Hair loss continues to be a psychologically distressing concern, particularly among men with androgenic alopecia. And as therapeutic strategies evolve, patients often find themselves at crossroads or wait for potentially revolutionary treatments like PP405. And not only PP405, a host of other novel treatments looming on the horizon. But as the saying goes, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. But this adage is worth revisiting in light of emerging science. PP405, a novel pharmacological compound under development by Pelage Pharmaceuticals, has garnered attention for its purported ability to reactivate dormant hair follicles. And it does this by targeting the prostaglandin pathway. Preclinical trials in uh, rodent murine models demonstrated remarkable follicular neogenesis and elongation of the anagen phase, raising hopes of a non-surgical regenerative solution. However, it remains an early phase two trials, human trials, and we are still several years, if not a decade, from getting definitive safety and efficacy data. Regulatory hurdles, formulation challenges, and unforeseen side effects could slow its path to clinical utility. But as a clinician who has duffed it out for two decades, I am very cynical of these new emerging treatments which are hype out of shape. So besides PP405, let us discuss the other treatments which are being talked about. Number one, stem cell based therapies. Autologous dermal papilla cell injections and hair follicle stem cell expansion have shown potential in pilot studies. However, these approaches face technical challenges in standardization, cell survival and follicular integration post-transplantation. And then we go on to exosome therapy. Derived from mesenchymal stem cells, exosomes carry with them signaling molecules that modulate inflammation and thereby promote hair growth. However, these approaches face technical challenges. Though anecdotal and small scale clinical data are encouraging, robust, randomized, controlled trials are lacking. And then the WNT pathway modulators. Molecules like SM04554, a topical agent, has shown promise in phase two trials. These agents, these WNT pathway modulators, aim to stimulate follicular regeneration by modulating embryonic signaling pathways that are involved in hair cycling. And then CRISPR, Cas9A based gene editing, still a distant reality for androgenic alopecia. Gene editing holds theoretical promise for conditions with a known genetic basis. However, ethical and technical constraints place this firmly in the not yet category. And then we go on to nutraceuticals or botanical extracts. Products like procyanidine B2, caffeine based formulations and marine collagen supplements show modest benefit. While relatively safe, they definitely do not reverse miniaturization and can never dream of being alternatives to definitive treatments for androgenic alopecia. And lastly, we go on to JAK inhibitors. Initially hailed for alopecia areata, agents like ruxolitinib and tofacitinib are being repurposed for androgenic alopecia. However, their high cost, immunosuppressive properties and limited efficacy in androgenic alopecia pattern hair loss make them an unattractive option at present. So given this landscape, the decision to proceed with a hair transplant still remains a pragmatic one and will remain for many years, at least for the next five years, especially for patients in whom the hair loss is stabilized and patients who have realistic expectations. Modern hair transplant techniques, when performed ethically and artistically, offer durable hair transplant results, results that last a long time. And you can see several such results in the playlist, the link to which is above.
in my technique DHX, which respects donor integrity, a donor conservation technique, and extraction in tools at my clinic, the procedure of hair transplant has become safer, more effective, and more refined. In conclusion, while the future of hair restoration brims with promise, many of these treated treatments are like building castles in the air. For individuals seeking immediate, reliable improvement, a well-executed hair transplant after stabilization of baldness remains the gold standard. One must never allow the mirage of unproven therapies to delay interventions that are tried, tested, have withstood the test of time, and have been audited and approved by the medical community. And as the scientific aphorism goes, the perfect is often the enemy of good. The long wait for perfection often means forfeiting what's already proven to work. And if you're a young man with a family history of baldness, you have no time at hand. You have to get on treatment, on proven treatments, because if you don't, even these proven treatments are not going to help you in any way once your hair fall off. So that is the talk for the day. If you have any questions about hair transplant, hair restoration, hair loss treatment for men and women, do let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you shortly. However, if you want a personalized consultation, do contact us on the numbers above and do join me every morning at 6 a.m. India time in my live streaming session, Follicle Fix at 6. So have a nice day. God bless you and see you in the next video.